Welcome everybody to today's celebration of World Philosophy Day hosted by Neocropolis. Um, World Philosophy Day is an occasion that uh, was introduced by UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, um, in order to reaffirm the power of philosophy to change the world by enabling us to transform and change ourselves. At New Acropolis, as a school of practical philosophy, for us, in a way, every day is World Philosophy Day. Um, because for many of us, for uh, many of our members and students joining us today, um, philosophy is a way of life. And perhaps today, more than ever before, the, the importance of reviving a philosophical approach to daily living um, with universal values at the heart of uh, our actions is perhaps increasingly evident if we really are looking to create some positive change in our uh, world today, some inclusive change in our world today. And this is humbly uh, what we endeavor to do at New Acropolis. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a school of practical philosophy and um, we are present in over 60 countries. And in each of these countries across the world, we mark today's occasion of World Philosophy Day with activities, with events, with celebrations across the world to, to share the value of philosophy for our times. In, uh, in India, New Acropolis is present in Mumbai, in Pune, as well as in Bangalore. And at New Acropolis, we have three pillars of action. The first pillar is that of philosophy, where we take inspiration from wisdom, which is at the heart of ancient civilizations across the world. And we explore how we can live it more fully um, today, how, and, and how we can ourselves therefore live more fully, more consciously and more responsibly. The second pillar uh, at New Acropolis is that of culture where we look to explore the diverse artistic, cultural, and um, uh, traditions from across the globe to, to, to discover the universal principles and values that lie um, beneath the different forms that each of them take, but are ultimately an expression of our, our one common humanity. So this is the pillar of culture that we explore as, as New Acropolis. And the third pillar, is that of volunteering. And as a school of philosophy, volunteering is a very natural pillar. Uh, we often refer to it as philosophy in action because the spirit uh, uh, of the volunteer, which is to, to go beyond my own personal needs, to, to use my own effort, to use my own will and to contribute and offer what is needed for the whole rather than just myself, this is the natural expression of a philosopher. And in keeping with this ethos um, of volunteering, our, uh, uh, our entire uh, organization is actually run entirely by volunteers, from the instructors to those behind the scenes um, of organizing an event like today. Uh, in fact, today's event is very much a collective effort of many aspiring philosophers at New Acropolis coming together and uh, offering themselves on this occasion. For anyone interested to know about us, you are welcome to um, uh, reach out to us through the chat. Uh, and for those interested to dive a little bit deeper to explore what it means to bring a philosophical approach to daily life here and now, we have our flagship living philosophy course starting in Mumbai very soon. Uh, we have a free introduction uh, to learn more about the course on Tuesday, 23rd November in Mumbai. And for Pune, we have a free introduction coming up in January. I will share the details on the chat for your reference. Um, and uh, I, I mentioned this because today's event can perhaps give us some glimpse in a small way of, of what this course offers. Because over about 20 weeks for two hours every week, we will explore teachings um, and wisdom from ancient traditions from across the world, from Plato, who we will, we will be meeting a little bit later today, to Confucius, to ancient Egypt, to the Bhagavad Gita, all in order to discover what can we learn from these wise men and women of our past who have similar questions to, to those that we have today, 
and perhaps to get some direction uh, from them on how we can live better today. Um, how can we live with uh, a little bit more purpose, a little bit more clarity, a little bit more happiness in our day to day? And in doing that, how can we build a better future? And with that, I would in, like to invite Malini, our aspiring philosopher and uh, our young seeker of wisdom to take us on a very special journey this World Philosophy Day as we encounter philosophers from across traditions, across geographies, across time and history, who have opened a path for many of us to aspire to walk in this light of wisdom. So Malini, over to Patricia, you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is truly a privilege for me to uh, be here this evening and to have this opportunity to uh, interact with uh, some of the most inspiring seekers of wisdom across time. Um, let's actually meet the philosophers for the evening. Uh, I would first like to call upon uh, Madam Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, originally from Russia, from the 19th century. Welcome, Madam Blavatsky. Good For those of Good evening. For um, those of us here, would you please say a few words about yourself? Absolutely. So first, thank you for welcoming me here. It's a very special occasion. I hear it's World Philosophy Day. Uh, and not a very common thing for someone like me from the 19th century to be in such kind of setup. Um, as you might know, I founded the Theosophical Society. And though I'm Russian, I never spent too much time there. I traveled a lot, especially in India, uh, but also to Tibet, uh, where I really encountered really a lot of wisdom and I learned a lot. And that's where all my writings come from and my inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Dolatsky. We um, also have with us uh, next uh, the Stoic philosopher and the Roman emperor from the second century AD, Marcus Aurelius. Welcome, sir. Please say a few words about yourself. Good evening. Uh, this is Marcus Aurelius. It's such a pleasure to be here amongst all of you. Uh, aspiring philosophers, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a joy to actually introduce myself. Uh, most of you know me as Marcus Aurelius. Uh, in full, my name goes as Marcus Aurelius Antoninus Augustus. Uh, no need to remember this, that's fine. Uh, you, I was born in uh, April 26, 121, uh, Christ era, and I lived until March 17, 180. Uh, so approximately, I was uh, the Roman emperor for uh, 19 years. That is from 161 to 180, Christ era. Uh, in, I was quite uh, influenced by the Stoic philosophy, and that actually forms the very core of my way of living uh, and uh, practicing uh, and conducting myself in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, I, as part of that, uh, I always, I always. Uh, wrote my reflections every day, which I think you today read as a book that is called uh, Meditations, isn't it? So yeah, so I think that is the, the it's not mine, it's, 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 it's in a way, it's a stoic philosophy speaking through me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, next we have from 5th century BCE, from Greece, Plato. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Um, for those of us who have uh, only heard about you and you know read um, a few things, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please, in your words, uh, uh, you know, introduce yourself to to all of us. Yes, uh, I, my name is Plato, and uh, I was born on 428 BC. And first of all, thank you very much for having me today. And uh, it's very good to be here in the company of distinguished philosophers. I was very impressed to hear from Madam Blavatsky that uh, you could uh, get access to Tibet. I would have loved to go on there. So I will ask you after the talk, which flight did you take? And uh, also Marcus Aurelius, uh, 
I also heard about you quite a while that after my time, you came and a lot of the work which I did in social politics with the idea of a philosopher king, it seems to me that uh, you were a living example of that. So it, to me, I'm very happy to be here today in this company. And a little bit about myself, uh, as I said that I was, uh, I was born in 428 BC, I was born in Athens and I uh, built a school of philosophy in a way, it's called the academy where many came to learn wisdom and live wisdom more importantly. And uh, my teacher was uh, Socrates, uh, who, another great philosopher. And one of my disciples or Aristotle was also another great philosopher. And uh, today I'm very happy to be here on a special occasion of World Philosophy Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again to all of you for joining us on this occasion, as you say, uh, of the World Philosophy Day in the year 2021. Um, your, all, all of your dedication, your work in, has um, opened a path in some ways for us aspiring philosophers of today uh, uh, to, to, follow, uh, to follow wisdom and to try and make some of these learnings relevant today. Uh, in fact, uh, today, along with me, uh, I have about over 130 other aspiring philosophers who are here to listen to you and to seek uh, this guidance from you. And uh, to those of us uh, to, uh, in the audience, uh, I request that you know, as I go ahead and ask my questions to these philosophers, when you have your questions, please put them on the chat. And towards the end, we'll uh, try and see and add your questions or share your questions with these philosophers. With this, um, let me, um, I'm, I'm very uh, eager to, uh, to interact, to start my interaction with you. Um, I want to begin with a very basic question. Um, all my life, uh, I worked very hard on things that I understood as important on uh, gaining the right educational qualifications. I worked hard on a career. I have a lovely family, uh, a good house. Uh, and yet uh, I realized that there was something more uh, that was missing, something more that I was looking for. And that's how I encountered philosophy. And I uh, started this, this journey just a few years ago. But over the past few years, uh, especially in the last two years, many of us have faced uh, many difficult challenges, different kinds of challenges in different ways. And this has in many ways um, allowed us to, or made us, in fact, encounter some fundamental questions about the meaning of life, about is there a purpose? Uh, is there a better way to live my life? And uh, these are questions, in fact, that the three of you have uh, not just asked, but have dedicated your lives to discovering. So uh, I would like, uh, I would request you to share um, what, according to you, is the value of philosophy in these um, challenging and uncertain times of today. It's a very good question, the aspiring philosopher. And uh, it's very interesting to first start with the word philosophy itself. Uh, this word was coined by another philosopher who was before my time, Pythagoras, where the word, the etymology of the word means philosophus, it means love for wisdom. So philosopher is one who loves wisdom. And uh, it's very important to first a little bit understand what is wisdom, because in, in, it, it just can be a very abstract topic and it is to some extent abstract. And uh, it's to say it in a simple way, uh, wisdom is to live with the uh, deeper principles and laws of life. Now, for example, how to behave in face of a challenge. This is part of wisdom. Or what to do when life is throwing challenges from all sides and how to maintain stability in all the various emotional storms we are going through. This is part of wisdom. Even when to sow seeds and when to harvest is also part of wisdom. So for human beings, we need to see the impact of living with the laws of life, living with wisdom. And also we need to see what happens when we don't live with wisdom and we live with other, other things rather than wisdom. And what we see usually is that uh, when we live with wisdom, we naturally live with more happiness. We naturally live with more freedom. We naturally live with in pursuit of as a quest, as a journey ahead to look something to look forward to, something to wake up every day in the morning and something to seek. On the other hand, when we don't live our day-to-day -day life and we don't conduct our day-to-day -day actions with wisdom, we see that we have a lot of stress, we have uh, sadness, 
we have all sort of challenges which causes unhappiness and we don't feel free and this is what wisdom can do in terms of our, in terms of our life now exploring wisdom starts with first actually pondering over the fundamental questions of life as you said you know what is the meaning of life or what is the role of life what is my role in this context of life and who am i actually this idea of identity needs to go beyond my passport or aadhar it needs to b who am i at my core and this investigation the start of this investigation is i would say a start of pursuing philosophy now if we don't have this no then we will not have a context of a challenge only we will look at challenge in a, in a very isolated way and we will somehow try to get rid of it or escape it but we might miss a uh, an interesting message from life perhaps a challenge is how life communicates with us perhaps in the moment of challenge we can discover a true identity and we can discover a purpose in this life and hence uh, we need to look at life in what we philosophers would call with a philosophical approach which means that what happens to us rather than to blame external circumstances and challenges and this person and that person and this situation and that situation we need to start exploring actually one second what is happening inside of me in those times and is there something i can do to to apply myself in a better way so that i can deal with this challenge with little more principles little more principles which we know are principles which really give us more happiness and more freedom and this is where the philosophy philosophical pursuit comes into being now coming close to wisdom perhaps has always been uh, a human quest always been the search for human beings and it's relevant all the time in my view it's not only relevant Uh, in today's time but it's always was relevant irrespective of what time period we were living in and in times of challenge it might be even more relevant and critical to live with more wisdom live with more deeper principles of life because i think life speaks to us more directly in this kind of challenges may i add certain principles there i think as plato spoke so well about wisdom and uh, maybe wisdom being related to a search for happiness um and how we look at happiness today i think we have a this tendency to give it more uh, aspect of comfort the comfort which can be financial social and um what we strive for is limit can be a bit limited to that and not related to the principles that plato talked about so if we look at it i'm sure plato had an environment which was much less comfortable than i had in the 19th century uh, i had roads vehicles i could travel and i'm sure that you in the this place now you have even more comfort than ever being able to talk to each other within a minute um being able to travel so much so far so fast um but does it really make us happier as it make you appear and uh, independent of the time and the place we see that it's a real question um and it with this tendency to confuse being comfortable um with probably the search for inner tranquility a calmness within and that's where you have to focus as aspiring philosophers to really make this difference between a pretty comfortable life and maybe um something based on more internal principles and uh, i can see that if i have a comfortable life i might still have a turmoil inside right something that bother me you said it um i was searching and it's still there it's boiling um and this eternal conf- conflict within myself are uh, the challenges also that uh, life put through us and uh, that um, we need to face but uh, if we stop here a little bit can we really understand how much mistakes how much failures and how much challenges really help us to learn if we really look at it in the right aspect we know when we come out of a challenge um that it was actually a very big opportunity to learn 
And uh, one of the quote that seems to be my legacy to your times is uh, no man can swim unless he enters deep waters. Because we really need to engage, we really need to go deep in order to face life and to, um, uh, we really need to take this opportunity to encounter and take those challenge. Let's take an example. Um, imagine you have a chocolate cake in front of you and a strawberry tart on the other end, but you have only one choice to make. Um, if you don't make any choice, you cannot try any of it and you will never know what you prefer. You might choose the strawberry tart and finally realize that you prefer the chocolate cake, but at least you know now. And this is exactly what philosophy helps us to do, to engage with life with a better consciousness while going deeper and deeper. Um, and I learned on the way how to look at my mistakes. And uh, if we trust a little bit that life puts us through the challenges that we are able to handle, um, it's up to us to race to the circumstance and face it. I wrote some years ago, uh, do not be afraid of your difficulties. Do not wish you could be in other circumstances than you are. For when you have made the best of an adversity, it becomes a stepping stone to a splendid opportunity. And as you can see today, you are not al alone to ask those questions. And there is a way to go through. And that's what philosophy helps us to do. And I'm sure that with Plato and Marcus Aurelius today, we will be able to take you a little bit deeper into how philosophy can do so. Maybe Marcus Aurelius, would you, add to, would you want to add something? Uh, thank you, Madam Blavatsky. Uh, yes, I think what uh, so much of wisdom uh, that has come through to you and to you and Plato. Um, uh, I, I think I'll take up the take the lead from uh, the words. I think you used uh, very much right now challenges, and I think also Plato used. Uh, it's 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 very important that uh, philosophy is exactly the way. That exactly the exactly the tool that you can use to go wade through the challenges, and it's like let's let's take a step further. What makes uh, what makes life challenging? What 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 is it that uh, that we feel tough? What is it that that makes us discomfort? Usually, it's usually we will see is uh, something that we can't control. Uh, it could be engagement with others, it could be interactions with others, it could be a circumstance, anything, anything outside which we can't control or which things that don't go our way uh, is some, something that we, that we call as challenge. Which means actually what we're looking at, what we're talking about is internal versus external. Something, what, and then what is internal or external is? External is something that we can't control. It is, out of our, it is out of our area of control completely. Uh, it could be circumstances, it could be somebody saying something, it could be somebody's opinion, it could be, um, uh, it could be a happening, hap uh, it could be an event that happened around. And what is internal? Inter internal is something that we can control, something that is in our hands. And that exactly is what philosophy helps us discern. I know, it's, it, I know we all, I'm sure, uh, we all know and we have heard about uh, the idea of uh, not trying to control what we can't and trying to control and trying to kind of work on what we can. Philosophy helps us put this knowledge into action. Philosophy helps us put this knowledge into practice. It helps us discern that, it helps us discern in the moments when it's required, when it's needed, to focus on what is, what is in our control, not to focus on what is not in our control. And this is exactly where it helps us maneuver through the uncertainty. This is what the word you used, uh, uh, your aspiring philosopher, right? Uncertainty. Oh, it, it, I'm sure the life is today as uncertain as it was then and that mind in that time. Right? I think I heard from Madame Blavatsky, she could reach to Tibet, I still had horses. So uncertainty is still in different ways and different times that way. So how, and, and how do I, uh, 
is it's like how do I ensure uh, that what we focus and what we don't focus on, we usually spend so much of time in what we cannot control. And it's like I I I remember of something very something I used to ponder over that we love ourselves so much uh, that and we and we still give so much of value to others' opinion, isn't it? We love ourselves so much. Something that we something that we decide, we judge. But at the same time, somebody else's opinion affects us so much, and that also we decide. This is exactly the the hold that the the external has over us, the circumstances. What is happening in the world? The idea to fit in, the idea to be part of something, the idea of validation, other people's opinion, uh, or, or 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 conditions that that the world put on us, the conditions of failure, the condition of money, the condition of uh, the condition of uh, say uh, in the conditioning itself, the way we are born and brought up. All these things which are coming to us from the outside. We are engaged in it through the time, through all the time in the world, and maybe we are engaged in it right from uh, from the time we enter the world and right then we exit the world, hardly making any difference and choices to actually figure out. Okay, there is something we can control, and what happens? What happens to the things that we can control? We don't bother about them at all. We don't bother about uh, uh, that. We can change our opinion, our opinion, not others' opinion. We can change our opinion. We can change our response, and this, by the way, this is a very strong pillar of its Stoic philosophy. Stoic philosophy, which has influenced me tremendously and motivated me or inspired me to practice and to actually look at philosophy as a way, um, is is the idea that you you your response is always in your control. So our response, our understanding, uh, what is within me that I can change. Or, I, or as as Mr. Basie said, that everything is outside. Every as Plato also said, everything is outside. The challenge is outside. Oh, you know what? It's everything outside. I thought it's outside. I don't have a chat. I don't. I don't know what to do within. So this is. Uh, I'm, am I so focused outside that actually I completely disregard what is I can change? So what happens is you are focusing on outside, which you cannot change anyway, and you completely disregard within, which you can change, and that. that way you develop a feeling or an impression that you are that you are your limitedness you are your limited opinion you are your maybe you are your uh, uh, biasness or prejudices and that's why you keep on behaving and then you keep on getting attached to who you are instead of uh, instead of changing what you can and actually it is possible you can change your opinion and that is exactly where i actually i ask you a question think of a time and i'm so because each one of us is an aspiring philosopher here think of a time when actually you changed you changed something you grew when you grew in that moment or in that time were you the same as you were before you changed so in the situation if you have grown which means either you were the person if you think about who you are and when the way we define ourselves i am like that then who are you are you the person who changed who was before the person before you changed or are you the person who who you are after you changed you grew and that's what the growth process of evolution is is called right who you are so which means change is possible which means growth growth is possible only when change is possible and that way it's important to focus on within because if you don't focus on within we we'll, we actually close our ways of growth and answer lies within because that is what is in your control i can't right now i can't push you to i can't tell you this is what it is so follow this it will only when you investigate as plato said you will figure out the way is the that that is it's like a step forward a step forward a step forward and that's how exactly how philosophy helps us in uncertainty that's how philosophy helps us make a choice it helps us make a choice to remember that when things are going bad outside the storm is outside i can still figure out what is it i can do inside and that is what the journey that each one of us has to cover and explore the more that is more to us through this and the more to us and and understand and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, realize that through the depth stability and strength 
that we can get from this investigation will be able to overcome this or maneuver through this uncertainty. So I think philosophy helps us to gain this depth, to gain stability, and to gain strength to move through this uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you. What I, um, um, from what all of you said, I understand that we first need to learn to look at, uh, really to look at life uh, in a context, the human life in a certain context. And, and within that perspective, to see challenges uh, and not just to see them as obstacles, but um, as, as life talking to us and as opportunities for us to work with. Um, and then to, um, you know, then the specific ways in which philosophy can help us discern this and what, uh, even look at um, within challenges, what we can and cannot work with. Um, what I understand also is that in, in the running behind the obstacles, we should not miss the essence. Uh, we should not miss the, um, we should not miss the, uh, the, uh, the being of it. And when we look at philosophy, therefore, we should not look at it as um, abstract, as we spoke of earlier. We, we cannot look at it just as a accumulation of knowledge, but rather we need to um, using this approach that you mentioned, we need to learn how to make it practical in our day-to-day -day life and that this is possible. Uh, in fact, can you shed a little more light on, um, on, make, on this journey, on how to make philosophy a practical way of life today? Very good question, uh, dear aspiring philosopher. And I would like to start by saying that uh, philosophy or wisdom is uh, wisdom only when it is practical and experiential. Anything else is not yet wisdom. For example, when you understand a principle, it's good, it's on the way towards wisdom, but it's not yet wisdom. Only when I apply it, only when I manifest it, only when I live it on the ground, it turns into wisdom. And for this, there is one tool, which in our times was the most basic tool to pursue philosophy with, was the tool of know thyself or to know ourselves. Now, long time back, I said a, a very interesting quote. I said that we can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark, but the real tragedy of life is when men and women are afraid of the light. Now, this is related to the idea of knowing thyself because to explore wisdom, is to say it another way, to explore the light, I need to first start going within me and need to navigate all the darkness or we can call it ignorance, which exists within me. And this tool of starting to do that is in fact a secret of unraveling many mysteries of life. For example, in uh, back in, uh, in, I mean, in, in Apollo, in the temple of Apollo in Delphi, there's a very interesting statement, which is, which is written, know thyself and you will know the gods in the universe. So all the mysteries of life, which we are, which we as an aspiring philosopher want to come close to actually start with us, that we ourselves need, need to kind of decode ourselves first in order to kind of connect with larger mysteries of life. And for this, knowing thyself is a first step to go in that direction. Now, what does it mean to know thyself? Knowing, that, knowing ourselves is not about knowing my name, age, gender, career, likes, dislikes. No, it is to go beyond this. It is to know or start to discover who I am at my core or what is my inner nature. It means who I am above my all the other perceived limitation. For example, is there something more to me than my physical body, my emotions and thoughts? Is there any other driver of action which is there's something different than these, these drivers? And do I have a choice? to kind of choose which driver to go with. For example, is my action led by selfishness or generosity? Now we have both of them. We also can act with selfishness. We also can act generosity. But here lies a very interesting key, which is that I have a choice with which, with, with which driver to go with. I have a choice to follow what actually aligns more to wisdom. Now, I should not explain why generosity aligns more to wisdom. I think it's kind of intuitive for us as human beings to connect that. And this kind of an approach leads us to a very interesting observation of ourselves. 
it starts by observing our motive behind every action it start that it's it in a way kai ask us to find that why why am i doing what am i doing is it just for any external reason or just to tick the box or is it something which is serving a serving a principle which is aligned to wisdom and this knowing thyself starts by kind of unraveling a lot of things about me which may be sometimes pleasant and sometimes not so pleasant to discover now this i did explain it in a in a very allegorical way when i once said you know that uh, that some people you know as a story who live in a cave it means it's there's a cave and some people live and they are kind of chained in that cave and they only see some shadows and some pictures in front of them and one day a, one person starts you know walking out of the cave because there is an exit to the cave and see the light actually outside and this is how we can see that there are two realities in which we function the one reality is a reality of a cave and another reality is out of a cave and let me explain this in cave or we can say now now by the way i got to hear later that many people you know took this idea and some of them got made a movie of it you know called the matrix a hollywood movie called matrix and it looks like it was inspired by my works what i said but the idea of a cave or matrix if you like to call is that there is certain reality which exists within us which in a way kind of a very limited reality it means that in this reality every day we function every day we 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 live our, we live our life we are led by this reality but this reality also has many things like for example it is kind of a subjective reality also we have lot of ideas which might not be in in accordance with the laws of life we have our own likes and own dislikes and all the limitations what you can perceive as a human being we have within us is is in this reality and there is also another reality which is free of all this another reality where we live with life as it is like as it's supposed to be and we live with more freedom and we live with more happiness and we are trying to connect with the essence of everything around us and this is where the journey of a philosopher begin because to know thyself means to start knowing that there is a lot of kind of a ignorance and darkness within me and that i need to slowly slowly step my way out of towards light out of the cave towards the light and this is not easy this is difficult it means that i need to first see that okay you know what selfishness is my shackles it's kind of when i only think about myself and i don't think about others it kind of limit me it kind in kinds of binds me and then i need to work with this i need to fight with this and then slowly slowly when i can actively change this and start living with more generosity i would i would say anybody of you if you have lived with this you will naturally see right you are more light you are so happy you are free and i would say that this is the value of knowing thyself and slowly slowly going out of this limited reality into i would call it a timeless reality and this is how what the the key of knowing the uh, the key of know thyself can do to a philosopher now this is something which is a very practical thing to do every day for example when in the every day when i'm faced with a challenge and i'm taken by many things this is a time to start to take a pause and to see things with more nuance to see things with more clarity and here i need to let the storm to pass first because our emotions will take us in one extreme or the another extreme but when i allow the storm to pass i can see things more clearly in a way like what my, my dear friend marcus said it is to in a way be be strong be stable to be a stoic like a pillar and then to navigate and then from here i discover what are my inner challenges because for example it cannot be that always other people are wrong it cannot be that all, all the time other people make me angry if i am getting angry it means there is something i need to do to change this and i i and this is where the the journey of know thyself begins and uh, i think this is what all of us need to start doing to slowly slowly st stepping up and discovering what is limiting us in a cave reality in a matrix reality and start going out and explore light and once we do that once we explore light a conviction will start to grow a conviction will start to build because before that it's like you know we we are so tuned to living in this reality that we think there is no better way but then when we start living it when we start seeing some drop or some ray of light i think slowly slowly the eyes will also get accustomed to another reality and i would say this is what it means 
to be a philosopher. That is very well said. And uh, I think I would add to this question of um, how to make it practical. And I think it will just highlight what has already been said. Um, three small advice. Um, one would be to define myself, who am I on the lasting and not on the temporary. What do I mean by that? The study of philosophy helps us to unravel those principles of life, as it has just been said. Um, and that cannot be really taken away from us. But if I bid myself on an identity that can be taken away from me, I will lose everything and I will find this instability and this uncertainty that we also spoke about. For example, I've heard that today being a manager at, at Amazon is a decent situation, but I can lose this job tomorrow. And what do I, if I define myself by this job, then what do I become if it's taken away from me? And in the same way it works for if I am a daughter, a mother, a wife, a husband, or any other hobby that might define you, or any work that might define you. And building my identity on things that can be taken away from me will not help me to find stability. And therefore, to live practically philosophy, I need to be myself on something which lasts. For example, here, who is not wishing to be more just, more compassionate, more truthful, and my striving towards those principles cannot be taken away from me. Nobody can really come on the way of me wanting to be that more and more and practice it. And therefore building this identity will take time. And Plato said it, a lot of um, maybe troubles on the way, obstacles, but I need to try. And for, I think one way to try is um, to start bridging the gap between my understanding of what is right and the action that follows. That's what we call be, be living an ethical life. And here we are not talking about do's and don'ts or guidelines. So we are really, many of you might think actually that this is subjective, that we can all have what is right for me might not be right for our aspiring philosopher here. But actually, if we take the example of truth, um, there are no way that my truth and another truth will be different. And by that, I mean that my understanding is my understanding today. And someone else's understanding is their understanding where they are. But from my understanding of what is true today, Am I trying to actualize this in my action, in my being, in the way I conduct myself on a daily basis? Most of the time, it might appear that we don't even follow what we know is true. Let's take a small example. Um, in my time, we used to write letters. It seems that now we write mails and that it goes very fast. And we all receive mails and um, we might not know to answer all the time. But in those moments, do I corner this mail somewhere thinking I will give the answer later somehow, or maybe someone will forget and will not ask me about the answer because I don't know, or I've not done the work to present? Or do I actually answer that I don't know or that I might, I might need more time uh, while I know this is the right thing to do? because someone is expecting an answer. Uh, and keeping someone hanging there might not be the most generous act. But this is my way of understanding. And what we need to do, as Plato said, is to know ourselves to define this way of what is right. And it doesn't matter that it's different for different people, but at least to align my actions and my way of living to my understanding. 
And my very last uh, advice on this uh, practical way of living, and I've seen in the chat that it's already mentioned a couple of times, is uh, philosophy cannot be knowledge, reduced to knowledge. It has to be lived. Um, if we don't implement, as Plato said, it cannot be called wisdom. And for that, I need to engage, I need to be sure of what I understand of philosophy. Let's take an example right now. From what has been said already for almost an hour, is there one practical advice that you have taken that you have decided that tomorrow you will implement? Something, maybe only one thing. But if you are here today in this discussion, it might be that you want to try and you want to explore life or experience life. What are you taking away today that maybe tomorrow you can put in place? And for that, we cannot read only books. Um, we might take something out of it, but we need to implement it and counter it and then learn from it. And that's what really knowledge is, is also to put in, uh, um, to experiment with it, to understand from our own perspective what it means. And that would be it. Thank you. Um, from the examples that you all share and from your perspective, it, uh, it seems that um, not only do you, um, the challenges across our times uh, are something that you understand uh, very, very clearly. And this, this shows even in the examples that you share of our times today, of our tendencies and our habits. I do understand a little more now of um, how, uh, how philosophy can help us grow to, to be better, uh, to discern uh, and what it means to live an ethical life and to you know work towards it. Um, but uh, is it is it more of this uh, individual process uh, only? Can given the world we live in today and you know uh, understanding of how we have um, questioned ourselves in the last two years, can philosophy um, help to make the world better? Or is it an individual pursuit? Okay, I'll take this, Marley. Uh, I think uh, it's a very interesting question. I think, and, and, and Madame Blavatsky and Plato has already spoken a lot on that. Maybe the Stoic philosophy can help here because uh, Stoic philosophy puts up some very simplistic aspects which are very profound in themselves, but if followed, um, they can actually uh, help you do away with this confusion. That is philosophy for me, individual, or is philosophy that the larger, larger aspect to it is a bigger, it connects into a bigger picture or it's about something big. Uh, and one of my favorite uh, 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 reflections, or one of the favorite aspects of reflection has been the idea of, uh, like the idea of a beehive, um, of how, uh, how, what is good for the beehive. And you, and you will observe this also, if you can actually observe a beehive. Uh, what is good for the beehive is not good for the, uh, is, is definitely good for the bee. But what is not good for the, but what is good for the bee might not be good for the beehive. Now, actually, let me put this in context with respect to what I mean when, I, when I'm talking about so I philosophy or uh, in terms of individuality versus the higher, uh, the, the bigger. Uh, actually, uh, the one key pillar of Stoic philosophy is virtues. And let me take you the etymology of the word virtue. The word virtue actually arises from the, from, the, from the Latin root vir, vir, vir. And actually, it means to be human. It means human. So if you translate this, so what are virtues? As, as Plato said, generosity, virtue selfishness. Uh, as Mirablasio also mentioned about choosing. So what are these virtues? Generosity, humility, sincerity, moderation, uh, endurance, gravity, honesty. You will go and like, you will think more and we can get more of it. So basically, what does it mean? to be human, it means to choose, which also means we have the ability to choose to bring our best. So the, to be human does not mean that we are surviving at our lowest potential. To be human means that we are exploring our higher potential and actually striving for it every day and it's a journey. So 
if if we are by any chance stuck what is to be human then we have to actually ask if what we are living is being human or we are actually see because we human beings have the only choice to discern to choose the plants how can can plants walk can plants choose to walk can animals choose to uh, kind of invent something or or basically or choose to be they are they are driven by the animalistic instincts so we have this choice the human beings are very lucky to have this choice or maybe we are have this choice that we are not understanding that we have the choice and what is the way to what is the way to make make use of this tool called choice we are completely confused maybe this could be some of the cases so it's very important uh, to actually about being human means to choose and when you choose these virtues uh i think there is a one there is one pattern we can fall into is we decide oh you know what i'll choose honesty today i was honest once no or you know what i just help somebody outside yes it is good we did it it is good that we are moving ahead and actually being conscious of it but it's not about that is not about it is actually about being that it's actually about when you see it you should be that way and i'm sure with so many aspiring philosophers sitting here i'm sure there are certain virtues we have mastered or we are actually working very very well with them and there are certain aspects which we look forward to investigate then we can actually become better at it and that exactly is what is called being human we all have flaws today we all have flaws does it mean that being human is a sad part no which it means that it's a great adventure to actually keep on becoming better when was last time you felt bad by becoming better it would have been a matter of joy i'm sure about it so when it was a matter of joy where is the aspect of feeling sad about it to actually choose and not to be part of or and, and investigate and become better and that exactly is we that exactly is brings to me the idea of what is it what is it, is it our role is our role to go with an animalistic instincts or we have a bigger role everybody has a role around here if you see the the minerals uh, the minerals or the, the or the matter or the like rock or something they 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 they, they are used right coal there is a utility of coal right there is a utility or utility of so many things that we find iron is being used in so many things it's is nothing but matter and like mineral what is the what is the usage of plants they are they are, they are part of our uh, eating system they are part of our food chain they are part of us so many things they give us give us medicines what about animals they give us so much emotional comfort there's so much there's so many things that like they are pet they are domesticating animals they are they okay right now in my time they used to help us get go from one place to another and i was like uh, now you're talking about flights it's completely alien concept to me so still they used to help us to go from one place to another uh they used to be help us in wash so that everybody else has a role and we don't have a role everybody else has something to buy to to to, to go to and to get to, to kind of uh, work as per their uh, as per their uh, for the lack of better word maybe the nature or, or as per their potential we don't have it i think we have a larger role imagine today if a plant stops giving us oxygen they are not bound they who binds them in fact i heard that they are, they are we have actually uh, finished a lot of vegetation on earth by this moment but who, who binds them to not give us oxygen but if they decide to give it, not to give us oxygen what will happen to us something that we feel so great about we will just die within seconds if we don't get the oxygen imagine all, all those things that we think about ourselves will just all our plans great plans will go into uh, nothingness if we just don't receive oxygen which we take so for granted so if everybody has a role to play then what is our role is what philosophy helps us and you can actually explore that role by practicing the virtues and that is exactly the biggest contribution because by practicing our virtues we explore now i can understand that you feel right now amongst a lot of us here why should i practice virtues why should i be generous why should i be honest the world around me is not and that exactly is the choice you're talking about because when we take a stand for something which is tough so then we take a stand something that you're not applauded for when we take a stand for something that is against what the world is doing of course it's tough 
but at the same time it is exactly what the identity that Mark, uh, that plato is talking about it is exactly the life that uh, madam blavatsky is talking about so and it is the biggest contribution that we can make for the world which means that when we do when we act when we do a good act we spread it we inspire others to do it we inspire and it it all aligns in a certain fashion which we can call a beehive and i also understand that you guys have just gotten through some kind of major pandemic oh sorry you not gotten through you are just a mess of it so imagine if somebody sitting somewhere so far can affect you so much here imagine your actions can actually impact everybody around you every day isn't it i think that is the biggest contribution we make if we change ourselves and virtues are one of the best ways let's be them let's be them on every day basis irrespective of somebody is being somebody is being great to me or not that is their choice as i said if you want to if you want to if you want to go ahead with the, their opinions then you are then you are actually limiting yourself and then you are actually limiting your potential by saying the others don't do it others don't do it they are anyway limiting their potential you also making that as benchmark then you are also limiting your potential would you want to choose to move ahead or would you want to choose to limit yourself so let's follow what you become let's kind of become the virtues and contribute and that in my view is the biggest contribution we can make together for the world it's very really interesting actually um, what madam blavatsky and and marcus uh, really said and it reminded me actually the second part of the allegory which i earlier mentioned that i said that the one who uses a tool know that self will go out of the cave but things don't end here actually the same person one who is a true philosopher will also actually come back into the cave and this time he will come back to guide people and liberate those who are still stuck in the cave now marcus spoke of this virtues virtues is is, is wisdom when you live with virtue you, you not just do align yourself with wisdom but you set an example for others to come closer to virtues it means when imagine when you are courageous how many people you inspire with your courage when you are generous how many people you can inspire with your generosity and hence so someone who loves wisdom it will be it's like it always need to be in service of the others for example all virtues are always in service of some, something larger than you some and other people not only for you you cannot say i'm only generous for myself then i would say it's not generosity if it's only if you are generous only for yourself and hence i would like to share here that uh, one who is serious about being wise and pursue philosophy pursue wisdom is naturally focused on bringing a positive change in the world because the goal to pursue philosophy is not that i only i liberate myself and say bye bye to the world the goal is to help every human being and every life form on this earth and together let's uh, go out of the cave and together live that kind of a timeless reality which some ancient uh, wisdom spoke of exist and that pursuit that collective pursuit is actually the main focus and the main goal of a true philosopher and uh, yes i would say somebody like blavats madam blavatsky and marcus sorelli is a very good examples of people who did that as an emperor and also madam blavatsky with your works exactly this kind of work uh, was left behind which people still take benefit from people still can come close to and i think this idea of individual and collective it's not a real question wisdom is always in pursuit of collective we know it's an individual journey but it is at the altar it it needs to be kept at the altar of the collective so be a seeker so you have any other questions for us uh yes um i understand again from what you say that um philosophy uh, not only helps me grow uh, understand life uh, evaluate my role in it respond accordingly but also it is not uh, help me grow but us grow in fact uh, from what you said of uh, i go out of the cave so that i can also come back in and lead others so it even the growth is done in in some sense in the um, to help the collective or to uh, for all of us to come out of the cave in some sense um and in that sense it is a very practical tool in fact something that possibly much needed in today's world 
uh, if we want to and strive to make the world uh, better. Um, thank you for this advice. And uh, actually, I would just uh, now want to ask um, one, uh, one final advice that um, you would like to leave us with for in 2021. One final piece of advice from each one of you, please, uh, that you would like to leave us uh, with today. I will start and um, I will keep it very short because I think uh, good advice is something very sharp. Um, we spoke about knowing what is right and bridging the gap between my understanding of it and my actions. And my last advice will be to learn to trust yourself and listen to yourself with honesty. It requires attention and the right way of thinking, to have clarity, to really search for it. And slowly, slowly, by learning and studying, to discover step by step, what are those more eternal principles? What is this gap? And to experience it, to put it into practice. And we might fall on the way, but this is the beauty. We might learn from it too. And that would be my last advice. I would say, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll take it from there. Uh, thank you, Madam Lavatsky. Uh, uh, the, what is one thing that I, that I get reminded of very often is we always talk about the good man. We always talk about what a good man should be. I would say, let's choose and decide that let's be those good men. Yes, as Madam Lewaski said, we might fail, but then we can get up again. But still we'll be a step ahead than naturally not trying at all. And in the process, let's have the courage. Let's have the courage to be the good man. Let's have the courage to go through the journey to leave aside for, for some time the external challenges, but to go through the journey to actually accept our own dark side, our own darkness, as Plato said, and kind of move ahead in spite of failures, and then over time, realize, oh, really, we have moved ahead on the journey. That's one. I would say, uh, as an advice, uh, since, it's, since it's like for those seekers who want to embark on the quest for wisdom, I think for those who want to start this journey, the first advice is, to start learning about wisdom and to start learning about these, these fundamental questions. For example, this quest is not a new to human being. Human beings since ancient times always have pondered and always investigated these fundamental and basic principles and basic questions of life. And I think let's start to study about them. Let's start to study from various traditions, various philosophers, Today, I learned a lot from Marcus and Blavatsky. And like that, it's, it's, it will be good to actually learn from what already exists in the world, what is a little bit left behind you know, by these great philosophers. Because the conviction which we, which we also um, want towards living every day will come slowly, slowly when we start learning the philosophical tools, when we start applying it, and slowly, slowly we, can, we start living it and it becomes our nature one day. But before we can do that, we need to first know in which direction to go. We need to learn from experiences of others that what can work and what cannot work, and then to try and live those principles. And hence for here, I would say it would be good to have a kind of study philosophy in a classical school of philosophy or the school of philosophy, which is in classical manner. It means the same wisdom, which today we saw from different times and different people is still lived in a more modern context. And it's just that I happen to know exactly this kind of school, which exists, you know? And, and I, I would say like uh, this at start, someone from New Acropolis introduced it. And I think this is a good place to begin, to start studying from here. And for that, that's very, it sounds to me very interesting, this introduction course, you know? I would like to uh, go and explore this. And I would also invite all the seekers to go and explore this wisdom and learn from various philosophers and then start your journey from there. So that's my final advice, dear aspiring philosopher. Thank you, thank you. In fact, as you say, I have uh, had the privilege of uh, uh, starting to learn, starting to study philosophy at New Acropolis, uh, where we do study practical philosophy. 
uh, I have been here for about four years now. And for those of us in the audience who are looking for a more uh, philosophical approach to life, uh, who are here today seeking, uh, you know, to, to have to live a more meaningful life, uh, and who resonate with this idea of uh, bringing change um, in the world today, bringing change um, in the world, but beginning with ourselves, uh, I invite you to uh, attend some of our also to attend uh, living philosophy course that uh, Trisha spoke about uh, at the start. Uh, we have one, um, uh, an introduction where you can learn more about this course on uh, 23rd of November uh, in Mumbai. And uh, we have another one in January in Pune. Uh, you can, you are uh, um, welcome to stay in touch with us so that we can let you know about your, about our courses uh, further. And um, while, um, um, you know, as I said at the start, there, as I have been asking you questions, there are uh, quite a few aspiring philosophers with us, aspirants to wisdom with us, who have um, uh, have been asking a lot of interesting questions. Um, given the constraint of time, we'll see how many we can take, but I do have a, a one or two here to begin with. Um, we have from Samdu Chetri a question, which is, um, can philosophy be useful without practice? And how can human being learns uh, human beings learn philosophy uh, learn philosophy in modern times when education um, so called is in silos where uh, we produce products for a marketplace um, this is unfortunately a challenge of our times and um, in this such scenario how can we allow individuals to learn and to live growth in this context live truth in this context, grow and live truth in this context. Uh, Plato, would you, uh, sir, would you like to address or Madam Blavatsky or both of you? It's a very interesting question. You know, the first one, what you said that, can you live philosophy without practice? Uh, I would say it's like, you know, you buy delicious fruits and you keep it in your kitchen and let's just keep it there without eating, you know? And of course it's good to have fruits in the kitchen, but the real value of it is when you eat the fruit. And hence, I would say this, I, I mean, this notion that uh, philosophy without practice, can it serve some purpose? I would say yes, because at least your mind will tune with good ideas and not say like, not with any wrong ideas. But I would say the real price, the real benefit of philosophy is in living it, it is in practice in our day-to-day -day life. And to answer the second question that uh, what to do since you mentioned that today's education, and by the way, there's a lot of work of mine about education in the level of society, in the level of structure and how education should be. And what I see today is very different from that. And I would say that uh, we need to work with what we have today. We need to work with what, where we are today. And hence, I would, as I said, a school of philosophy where people pursue philosophy in this light from the point of view of living it in a practical way, I think this kind of places, if it's accessible to you, or if you can find out, I think it's a good place to start. And apart from this, if you don't have something like this, then to still go back to the whatever wisdom which is left by the ancient philosophers, you can go back and you can read the Gita, you can go back and you can read from Blavatsky, the voice of silence. And still there is, I would say enough for you to take the first few steps still that is enough for you to really start implementing it and living it because in the end i would say life is what uh, is the ultimate teacher of wisdom and when you work with life actively life will also respond to you and you will also at the right time also get guidance and and certain uh, certain direction which can help you with so i would say yes today it's not the same today it's not ideal to to have you know like a, a no conventional school which is a school of philosophy but i think maybe those who are seeking today here one day you can open such school and you can spread wisdom towards the world thank you sir madam blavatsky would you like to add to this no i think it's very well and so then we spoke about the practical way of living philosophy um and related to how to focus maybe by all those distractions and things that are more imposed than a choice, um, we cannot separate from the world that we live in. 
in my times, I also faced a lot of challenges. It was not always easy to reach Tibet with my nationality. Um, but I think when there is a will, something can happen. And uh, instead of separating from the world where we're living, is to make sure that we can take the best out of what is available to us. Um, and in order to change slowly, maybe certain things there. So in fact, um, we don't um, need to be, um, we don't need to feel uh, like victims of our conditioning or of our times and that we have the power and that in different ways, each of you faced uh, challenges and that did not stop um, uh, you from dedicating your life to yourself. So we don't need to hold ourselves back because of this. In fact, this can help us to our challenges and our times have their unique opportunity for uh, for us to still uh, pursue this path and to live meaningfully is what, is what I understand. Thank you. Just add something there. Uh, sure. I'll just add something there. I heard that there's something called internet in your society right now, whereby the information travels very fast, the knowledge is very fast, it's accessible everywhere. In my time, it was not there. That's why I used to write reflections every day. In fact, it's a good habit. But the point, the, the, the point is, uh, if only knowing things would have made things better, then the, the access to knowledge that you have today would surely have set everything all right in the world today. But I feel somewhere we have gotten further down the hole and we still have not realized it. So I think, yes, I think practicing philosophy, knowing knowledge and practicing are two different things. If knowing would have been just enough, then the volumes you have today would have sorted all the problems. But it is not, it is not sorting it out, which means the step is still goes back to the same aspect of Osman Blavatsky and Plato. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. But um, another related question is from Divya, who asks, uh, does striving for an ideal uh, for these timeless values that are stable, uh, that, you know, but does that cause instability by itself, the striving for these values? And what about the aspect of, um, you know, embracing all our elements? What about the aspect of, uh, you know, embracing all of our imperfections along with our strength? Uh, are, we, uh, are we rejecting that aspect of ourselves? I think it's a very good question. And um, I think the instability that uh, Divya spoke about is, um, is a way that when we try something new, we will face those challenges and we will face those instabilities. Because we trying new, we might not know which direction. And um, what philosophy will help us is to define that direction at least, so that we know in which way we walking and that we have a direction to it. And on the way, we might not have a straight path towards it. Um, and it might seem sometimes that it creates more instability than it needs. But when things are right, we usually know it also. Uh, and that's, I think, what the path of virtue uh, will invite everyone to do, to look at those virtues as the direction, my, despite all the obstacles that it might represent to go that direction, especially when we are not sure where we're stepping in. Where are we stepping? And uh, but embracing our um, maybe default, so imperfections, maybe we can call, uh, we have to do with it. And that's where the change, we have also spoken, the change might come step by step by learning, by experiencing. And uh, to not choose to engage is actually to kind of withdraw from life. Because if there is no choice, there is no encounter. There is no learning. And um, therefore, there is nothing. All right. Very, it's very interesting just to add one thing here. This instability is something I would say to be expected and it should be. Why? Because it's like saying that when you, the real challenges will come when you start, when you stand up and start going out of the cave. At that time, all your chains and all the things which limits you all the things which holds you will become more active. And hence, that's where you need to fight 
to overcome as long as you are in the cave it's also like kind of a comfort zone no that you are okay with it you're, you're, i mean you can be you can have an idea of stability a notion of stability but it would be more of a comfort zone it would not be real stability the real stability will be when you start making that effort going out towards wisdom and the challenges and this 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 battle between virtues and vices will take place at that time you can really really develop stability without this instability there is no opportunity only to develop the stability and hence it's a, it's a very interesting way to to look at uh, this question just wanted to add this point here thank you thank you thank you um there are actually many more questions uh, i would uh, maybe maybe um, a club one or two but there is one um, question that is repeated is uh, the concept of freedom uh, you mentioned that we are free to make choices uh, and that that will actually define us but um, uh, swati asked and also kamlesh that how can we really uh, be more free in today's time or how can we are we really free to make our choices how can we live with more freedom in today's times is this something that uh, one of you would marcus uh, aurelius would like to address uh yeah i think uh, that's a very interesting question because uh, uh, the way we the way we have uh, or the way we have lived or the way condition we feel that things are happening to us and we really don't have a choice per se i think i think we can live free if you are not attached to the results because the moment you attach to the results uh you lose the idea of exploration imagine and i give you a very easy example do you go for uh, do you go for something called an adventures called trek so how many times is it that you loved the trek only because you lost your way the new path you found or the new water body you just saw had you been attached to the result of reaching to the peak at this and this time at this and this hour and this then you would have lost the joy of the journey and making the choices on the way then why then is going through life any different than that if you are attached to what you want then any choice you will make that will go against it will anyway hold you and you say i don't have a choice because you are attached to what you want i think that exactly is if we are if we already have the result in mind then either we go with what we already have and we and we forget about that there is other way could be but if we are exploring other ways then be ready for the adventure of life and just like you have tremendous joy and experience in choosing the path or going on a different path which is not known and realizing new things philosophy will take you to that to make choices to to see what the freedom actually means so when you when you when you choose with respect to and with your free mind how do you what is the experience you get and that is exactly how you will and of plato said in his said in his last last uh, answer is that exactly how will you explore and strengthen yourself and bring stability and as as i said stability is not outside the the response the power of response is within us and that is from where you get the stability not from the circumstances outside and challenges will keep coming yeah thank you thank you one now uh, last question out of the many that are left uh, and maybe with the time uh, one of you could uh, answer is um, a question from janisha she asks and i see it connected to the last uh, part that you spoke which is um, how can you always uh, this choice that we make of um, of being the better person how can you actually be the bigger person or the better person in today's world uh, in this cynical world you know what really keeps you going when when you still face this opposition or this um, unfavorable circumstance what still keeps you going it's a it's a very interesting question um, something which uh, again when you see world and society at large well, i think many of seekers also may have this uh, something going within them now yes it is true that we are we we are impacted by the world in which we live and uh, yes in the world where there's so many things going not wrong we may get dejected we may get you know disappointed but i think a philosopher uh, a seeker an aspiring philosopher for that person this can be a greatest opportunity why because there is so much which needs to be done to connect people back with wisdom and i think this person will become very busy 
because he when you see darkness uh, when you see ignorance when you see the light of wisdom less in any given point of time in history even the small light even the small light it's like saying you know in a dark room a small candle will lighten up the whole room it means that in this kind of scenario this kind of world where we see the the lack of uh, many principles which we see not expressing in this time when you express that principle you become that small light for many people you become that small light for people at least around you and hence i think it would be a more of an impetus and a motive and a drive to actually bring and be this light in today's time and hence i would say it's a matter of how you look at it from a philosophical approach i would say it's is our greatest opportunity today's time with, with all our issues and problems and whatever we have it's also an a great opportunity to start taking those steps towards uh, wisdom and to start being that change you know to be that person coming back in the cave to really helping others and uh, yes this is what i would like to say thank you thank you uh, and i think on this strong note of being the change uh, i want to thank all of you once again um thank you to plato marcus aurelius and madam blavatsky for your advice uh, for your reflection on our times today and um, thank you to everyone in the audience um, and for these very interesting questions and for being with us this evening i we hope to see some of you in our courses and further events uh, with this i would like to thank once again everyone and uh, hand over uh, back to trisha thank you very much dear aspiring philosopher for taking us on this very beautiful journey uh, and of course uh, to uh, the great philosophers here for being uh, with us this evening uh, also to add i would like to thank all the many philosopher volunteers who um, made this event possible and brought their creativity and vibrancy and all their efforts to making this evening possible and making this evening truly a celebration of philosophy